After the landmark success of Jurassic Park, everyone knew that a sequel was pretty much guaranteed. And four years later, in 1997, The Lost World was released to incredibly mixed reviews, dividing fans of the first movie, yet managing to pull in a ton of cash regardless. Critics weren't exactly too kind to The Lost World, and at this point in time, Jurassic Park hype was kind of followed up by projects like Godzilla and Dino Crisis, while audience members were too busy arguing about the second film's quality. Still, following that movie's release, a a ton of other creature features started to get greenlit and begin production in the hopes of cashing in on the whole monster movie craze. And 1999 was a big year in that whole trend. You see, after Jurassic Park, a ton of dinosaur movies popped up out of nowhere like Theodore Rex, Carnosaur, and Prehysteria. After The Lost World, a bunch of dark thrillers centered around wild animals began to do the same. 1999 was probably the biggest year for these sort of knockoffs, and movies like King Cobra, Lake Placid, and Deep Blue Sea all came out that year. One such film though, the one that was the closest in relation to The Lost World, ironically fell by the wayside. This movie was called Komodo, and it was directed by one of the men responsible for the special effects in Jurassic Park, Michael it was also made with computer-generated effects from Tippett Studio and even got the screenwriter from Anaconda to help shape its story. The movie literally starts off identically to The Lost World, with the camera focusing on oceanic waves before panning up to reveal its island setting. Only, the story starts to deviate here and shape its own narrative to help set it apart from the Jurassic Park movies you've already seen before. Michael Lantieri's Komodo tells the story of a clutch of Komodo dragon eggs that for some reason got dumped on Emerald Isle a long time ago. And 19 summers later, or the year 1999, a family and their dog get eaten by them, leading the main protagonist to freak out and get a psychologist to help him face his fears. Now, Komodo is a movie that has most certainly been forgotten. A lot of you will no doubt have heard of Anaconda, Deep Blue Sea, and Lake Placid, but not everyone remembers the actual Jurassic Park follow-up that literally had the most ties to the Jurassic Park series. Much of this movie goes out of its way to literally emulate one scene in particular from The Lost World, which is the famous don't go into the long grass sequence of the film. A fan favorite for people like me and absolute 1990s one-liner gold as far as action thriller dialogue goes. Many times in this movie, you'll see the Komodo dragons actually move about cornfields at night, chasing after the humans, and it's meant to look and feel just like that whole long grass sequence with raptors. Now, in what is possibly the movie's most most memorable scene, one of the Komodo dragons actually jumps into the back of a vehicle while it's taking off after it bursts through the glass. Kind of like that scene where the raptor attempts to kill Malcolm in the worker village. And I honestly can even see this whole scene being inspiration for Colin Trevorrow when he went to direct the chase sequence in Jurassic World. The plot of this movie is basically that these people wind up on Komodo Dragon Island and they just have to survive. I'd elaborate further, but that's kind of all there really is. This is a film that doesn't really have too much going on for it other than monster attacks and state-of-the-art visual effects, which it definitely did do a good job at during the time. The Komodo dragons in this movie are honestly really good for 1999, and you can tell that they're having a lot of fun making a little animal attack film after working on Steven Spielberg's dinosaur movies. At one point, they even let the Komodos use the Velociraptor sound effects while they're killing a person, which I, I thought was kind of funny. Another scene that I think is really interesting in the film has to deal with the main character going Rambo on the Komodo dragons and actually trapping them before stabbing the lizards with metal rods, which was crazy enough, but later on, the psychologist has to hide from another Komodo dragon, and while she's hanging on to the one that's been stabbed's body, its eye opens up, and it starts to wriggle around while she's desperately trying to cling on for dear life. Man, that's a pretty intense idea that I think works out pretty well in this movie as far as originality goes. Like, you didn't see that in Jurassic Park. And, of course, shooting a flare in a monster's mouth at the very end, that stuff's always cool as well. Of course, the fact that you guys haven't heard of Komodo is probably your first sign that it's not a very good movie. And I will admit that it's not exactly going to win any Oscars or show up on any best of lists for these kind of things, but I will say that it's better than you'd think it would be and does have some genuinely fun sequences that I think are worthy of a good night of cheesy monster movie watching. 
I'd love to ask Michael one day what exactly the process was like for making this thing because you can totally tell that the scenes they thought up and the special effects they were employing had to be a blast to work on. But obviously, this thing is kind of just a vehicle for that sort of thing and doesn't really hold a candle to any of the Jurassic Park film stories or ideas. This was a movie I rented from either Blockbuster or Movie Gallery back when it first came out. And it's one that I really thought was fun in 1999 or 2000 or whenever I first saw it. Watching it now, I'm of course aware of the problems and boy do they exist, but if you want to check out a monster movie about wild animal attacks from the 90s that has fallen by the wayside, I would definitely recommend checking this one out. No, you're not going to find one of the greatest movies ever made, but you definitely will discover a film made from some of the guys responsible for the Jurassic series that got caught up in the tidal wave of Deep Blue Seas, King Cobras, and Anacondas, and even more of those knockoffs that eventually carried over into the sci-fi channel territory with the likes of Boa and Python just a couple of years later. It's funny because when you look back at creature features, Jurassic Park is like the pinnacle of perfection, like that movie was the highest grossing film of all time. Lost World was not exactly as good, but it's definitely higher quality than a lot of the other stuff that came out later, whereas Komodo is a step below the standard, normal, typical, cheesy monster film. Deep Blue Sea, Lake Placid, Anaconda, you name it. Komodo is like a step down, and a step down from Komodo, that's when you hit the dino shark, or like dino croc stuff. This is literally funny to look back at. Jurassic Park spawned like just huge movie success, and you can eventually see in 10 years how the sci-fi channel was literally churning out like made-for-TV garbage. <laughs> the best way to go into Komodo, this movie, is to imagine what a Carnosaur film would be like with Phil Tippett's CGI team working on the special effects, Michael Lantieri directing, and the dinosaurs being replaced by lizards. You do that, and you've got yourself Komodo. Anyways guys, I'm genuinely curious to hear how many of you have seen this movie because it's kind of really hard to get any information on in this day and age, and I can remember vividly checking it out when it was a new release. Again, it's not a good movie, and you all should have figured that out already by now, but I would like to hear exactly what your own thoughts are on this forgotten monster movie from 1999. So whatever your own thoughts and opinions happen to be on Komodo, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below.